Succulent plants are instantly recognizable anywhere thanks to their chunky water-filled leaves and stems. They have also become very popular thanks to their hardiness and minimum fuss care requirements. They come in many shapes, sizes and colors and often from different parts of the world. In this video we're going to have a look at what exactly succulent plants are and how to care for them. The word succulent comes from Latin, succus means sap or juice. It is used to describe plants that have swollen, fleshy or thickened parts. Succulent is used at species level rather than genus or family, as some species within a genus can be both succulent and non-succulent, although there are families such as Crassulaceae that have mostly succulent plants. Over 25 families have succulent species within them. But people get a bit picky about which plants they call succulents. For instance, scientifically, cacti and bromeliads are also classed as succulents, but are rarely called such. Here's a fun fact you may not know. All cacti are succulents, but not all succulents are cacti. If you think about it, cacti are the ultimate succulent, as most of their body is made out of water. Succulents store water in their leaves, stems and even roots. They can be up to 95% water. This ability to fill up with water is mostly an insurance. Succulents have developed like this because most come from dry environments where water is scarce. In some cases, it may only rain a couple of times per year. But when it does rain, succulents make the most out of it and soak up so much, they become swollen. This then allows them to draw slowly on their water reserves when the dry weather returns. The fleshy or swollen appearance is called succulents and it is not the only water-saving feature succulents possess. Many succulents have developed the following to be able to save as much water as possible and prevent water loss. Growing roots need the surface to maximize water absorption, speedy wound healing, ribs that are able to expand with water absorptions and deflate when dry, hair, wax or spines on the surface, mucilaginous or gluey surfaces which help with water retention, crassulosane acid metabolism which allows plants to photosynthesize during the day but exchange gases only at night. This helps with preventing water loss during the exchange. Let's have a quick look at some examples of these water saving adaptations. These lines or ribs are able to deflate or expand. When water is plentiful, many cactus species soak up so much, the ribs are hardly visible. The cobweb sempervivum grows a fine web that is able to trap moisture, slow down evaporation and provide shade to leaf surface below from the sun. Many succulents such as this Echeveria bluebird look like they have been sprinkled with icing sugar. This dusty surface is called the farina and protects succulents from strong sun and is damaging UV. It acts like a sunscreen. The farina can rub off when a succulent is touched, so do be careful when handling your plants. Some succulents like this Senecio blue chalk sticks are also ever so slightly sticky. The function of this glue is to prevent dehydration and slow down water evaporation. With the exception of Antarctica, succulents can be found on every continent. The highest concentration of succulents is in South Africa. They are often found in dry and arid landscapes where not much else will grow. The soils also tend to be fast draining, lacking in nutrients such as nitrogen and be short of moisture. While many succulents are unlikely to be found in true deserts, they do grow in some pretty inhospitable places. Having said that, there are succulent plants that grow in humid environments and are mostly epiphytic. So basically you can find succulents in loads of different landscapes from seasides to mountainsides to jungles. Because succulents come from such a diverse range of environments, it is impossible to give a specific answer and advice that would cover all succulents. Nowadays many new hybrids come into play as well. While some are purposefully created to be hardy and generally better, many get cultivated purely because of their attractive looks and are often difficult to keep alive. But some generalizations can be made. I own a small plant nursery and most of my 300 different species and varieties of succulents grow together in greenhouses. 
Please note that the following advice may not work for all succulents, but should be good for the majority. The best advice I can give anyone when it comes to succulent care is to find out the name of your succulent. This can be done by searching characteristics on Google, using plant ID apps or ask on social media. This way you can search the name and get tailored care instructions for that specific plant. My second most important piece of advice when it comes to succulent care is to assume your succulents are not suitable to grow indoors. While there are succulents that make good house plants, they are in the overwhelming minority. Most succulents are likely to stretch and eventually die or rot indoors. Further away they are from direct sun, quicker their demise. It is quite unbelievable how often I see large channels and websites claiming succulents are the best low maintenance indoor plants. I can categorically state based on my 10 years of owning a nursery and growing succulents that most, especially the pretty colorful rosette ones, will die inside the house. Only a sunroom or a full glass wall getting at least 4 hours of sun could provide enough light to support succulents long term. If you'd like to know which succulents will survive in those long term, you can visit our website or subscribe as I am working on a video covering indoor plants. Let's move on to potting mix. If you want to grow succulents in pots, good quality succulent potting mix will make all the difference. It should have the right kind of nutrients and minerals to support healthy growth. If you're however planning to make succulent gardens, plain soil should be fine. If it is too heavy or clay-like, mix a bit of potting mix in which will help break it down for succulent thin roots. Also keep in mind that most succulents are not frost tolerant and so if your climate is cold in winter, you'll need to do research on which succulents will cope with frost and snow. Most succulents will grow best in plenty of light and need some exposure to the sun. Succulent pots and gardens should be in spots with at least half day sun. Many hardy succulents will survive in some shadier spots outdoors, but they are likely to be less colorful, stretch and at more risk of rotting during rainy spells. We've previously established succulents are mostly endemic to dry, arid parts of the world, but they still need to be watered. In my opinion and experience, succulents should be watered when the potting mix dries up. Most do not like to have their roots constantly wet and can rot if they sit in soggy mix. Don't be shy and properly drench, but never spray your succulents. To help potted succulents grow, they should be repotted about once a year. This wall they'll have plenty of energy to get bigger and produce offsets. When it comes to pests, there are two that really love to have succulents on their menu. One is the mealybug and the other aphid. Both are extremely annoying and quite hard to spot at first, though it is the mealybugs you want to avoid. Pests are a lengthy topic, so if you'd like to learn more, see our video Animals that like to eat succulents. Many other animals such as snails, slugs, grasshoppers, caterpillars and even birds love to munch on succulents. These are just some basic instructions that should keep the majority of succulents pretty happy, though they do not apply to all succulents. For instance, a small minority of succulents in genera of Hawothia, Gasteria, Ripsalis or Epiphyllum prefer bright shade to sun, don't mind humidity and water so much and can be grown indoors. Then there are also the touchy hybrids to think of. I cover different types of care advice in detail on my website succulentgrowingtips.com and in other videos. And that's it for today. I hope you found this video useful and thank you very much for watching.